Okay, welcome to another video. Today we're going to take a look at Garuda Linux. So Garuda Linux is an Arch-based distribution which uses the Zen kernel and its default file system is ButterFS. Now, we did actually take a look at the LXQT version not too long ago and I'll chuck a link up there if you want to watch that one too. But today we're going to be focusing on their KDE version and in particular the Ultimate Edition. So we're in the live environment right now and the ISO size for this Ultimate Edition is a whopping 5.3 GB. However, they do offer a lighter edition which should be a fair bit smaller. With that being said, we're going to load up the installer and install it natively to the main desktop here and then take a little look around. So we've just got to wait for the modules to load in Calamares and we should be good to go. So British English is the language. Next. So we want Europe London. So if we just point our cursor right about there, we should be good. Okay, so we've got English UK as the layout by default, and let's just test that in our box below to make sure everything is behaving as it should. And next. Okay, so we're going to be using the Sabrent again, which is a poor old drive that's been getting a bit of a battering as of late, but for today it should just about do. So we're going to do an erase disk, and if I remember correctly, we also have the option to set up swap with Hibernate, which is what we're going to go ahead and do. So on the little output of the After Effects here, you can see we're going to have one EFI partition of 300 meg, and then we're going to have our root partition, which is using the ButterFS file system, and then the rest is all going to be assigned to root, which is about 34.5 GB, which should be enough to enable us to suspend to disk with full hibernation, and that is something we'll be testing out once we are fully installed and at our desktop. So next. Okay, user account time, and as we have got eagles flying over all over the place, we're going to call this one Eagle Boy. Type in our password and repeat it. And as per usual, we're going to be logging in automatically and we're going to use the same password for the administrator account. Next. So let's just review our options and make sure we haven't made any little mistakes and we should be good to go. Now, as soon as I press install now, I am going to be starting my stopwatch because I've got a feeling this might be a quite a long installation compared to what we are used to. Okay, and with that being said, I'm going to pause the video here and be back once this has finished. Okay, so the installation has complete and that one clocked in around about 9 minutes and 15 seconds once we'd got past all of the user input. With that being said, we're now going to reboot and check out our freshly installed Garuda Linux KDE desktop. Okay, and here we are. And as you can see, there is rather quite a lot of stuff going on on our screens here. So what we're going to do for now is just minimize the welcome screen and we'll take a little bit of a look at that in just a moment. So we've got two terminal windows that have just popped up, but they both appear to be for the same thing. Thing. So we're going to close one and take a look at the other. Oh, and now we've got Wine popping up as well. So we know that we have Wine support enabled out of the box. Let's just move that to the right and let that do its stuff while we check out this welcome screen. So welcome to your initial setup assistant. What do you want to do? So we've got a few steps here. So this first bunch applies to the light and ultimate editions. So we can get initial mirror list and download a list of packages. We can update the system. We can de-bloat the system. Which, if you're going for the Ultimate Edition, I don't think you're going to be too concerned with that, because if you was, you would not be using this Ultimate Edition of KDE. Number four, we can enable system-wide ad blocking, high DPI mode, guest user, which also disables Samba, printing and scanner support. And then the last step in this little bunch here is disable CPU mitigations, enable sysrec and set boot options. Now in light only, we have a few more steps, so we can fix missing characters by installing Asian fonts. Seven, we can enable snap and flat pack support. So at least we know that out of the box, the Ultimate Edition does have snap and flat pack support. We can install gaming dependencies like Lutris and Steam, which I'm going to imagine is included in this Ultimate Edition. And then we can upgrade to the Ultimate Edition from the light, which is pretty handy. And then finally, we can exit and delete this assistant. So I guess we're going to go ahead and do the first step and get the mirror list and make sure that's all good. So let's type in one, hit enter. Now it's going to open up the arch mirror selecting here and as I can see we are actually currently on United Kingdom so we're going to leave it on that. And we've got the little mirror list to save here so we're just going to go to save to mirror list and we should be good to go. Okay it's asking for a password. Hmm authentication failed let's try that again. Okay so that appears to have gone through so it's going to do a little synchronizing package update now and it appears that we have finished that step. Now we can also update the system all from within here, so let's do that as well. So pressing 2, we'll now run through the update, and there's quite a lot to update. So what I'm going to do 
is pause the video here and then come back once this update has completed. Okay, so after a good few minutes, the update appears to have been complete, so we should be good to go. So what we're gonna do is just exit this initial setup screen now. We're not gonna type 10 to delete it though, we're just gonna control C straight out of it. Okay, oh, we've got another little wine pop up there. Okay, what we're gonna do is just take a little quick look at the Garuda Linux or welcome screen. So on the first page, we have some general web services, support and contact us links. Now in tools, we have Garuda settings, which is where you can change things like your kernel, language packages, user accounts, and locale settings, etc. Now we have boot options, network assistant, partition manager, which will just be KDE's disk partition manager, which operates pretty much the same as Gparted. We then have time shift, which as we are using ButterFS as our default file system, we can get the full BTRFS system snapshots, and it will all be set up to work with ButterFS out of the box. So we're going to select ButterFS, and we're going to use this disk here, and we're going to leave it on the daily and finish. Okay, so it appears that it actually took a snapshot for us while it was doing that update. So we've already got one there. So as you can see in the comments, we can't quite see it. Let's full screen. You can see that it's done an auto snapshot created before the upgrade. But if we wanted to create another one again, we could simply just go to create and it would create another snapshot for us. Okay, I'm a big fan of ButterFS, especially when you couple it with Time Shift. Now, we also have System Cleaner, which if I remember, referring back to our LXQT video, it uses an application called Stacer, which is quite an involved program and you can do quite a lot with it, such as clear your cache, change your sort of auto start, and while we are here, let's see what applications start up out of the box. So we've got Conkey, Garuda, but a lot of this isn't actually enabled, but Redshift is, which is an application that's going to change the color temperature of our screen, which is especially useful in the evening to save strain on your eyes. Let's quit out of that for now and keep going. Oh, it's disappeared. Let's just reopen that now using KRunner. Oh, we've spelt that completely wrong. Go away, Discover Store. Let's do that again. Garuda. There we go. So I think that's pretty much everything in tools as well as software, of course. So you, I do believe it does indeed use PAMAC, so you can install most of your applications from here. Now let's keep going. So that's everything in tools. In maintenance, we have upgrade system, reinstall all packages, refresh mirrors, edit repositories, and we can also clear the cache here as well as clear the package cache. We can then remove orphans, which is your orphan packages, and then remove the database lock which you might want to do if you're trying to sort of do an update and for some reason it's locked, you can just go ahead and remove that and then initiate your update. Now in ButterFS, in the services, we have FS trim and scrub file systems and in tools, we have defragment and balance. Yeah, quick access. I remember this from the LXQT video. I'm not too sure how useful this actually is on a desktop operating system, but these are basically little toggles, much like you would find on an Android phone when you pull down your notifications to enable certain features. Now, I don't think it's super useful on a desktop operating system, especially when you've got to open up your welcome screen to get there, but it's there for those that might need it. And we've got the same sort of thing here for control now, so we can do audio, microphone, brightness, and leave. And finally, in settings, we have our Samba settings and printing, scanning, input method, right-click emulation, guest user, add guard, and high DPI. So that's pretty much everything that we're gonna take a look at in the welcome screen. So now we're going to take a look at the desktop and obviously there is quite a lot going on here. So at the bottom of our screen we have a dock which is going to be Latte dock with a few pinned applications. And we then have a sidebar button which is going to open up your notifications as well as a couple of little widgets here for CPU usage and memory. Now moving towards the sort of middle of our screen we have a little conky widget which is going to tell you the date and time and give you some overall system information like your OS, CPU usage, RAM etc. Now, moving towards the top of our panel, I don't think it's a traditional KDE panel. In fact, I think it's a Latte panel. It is indeed. So starting at the top right, we have our user switcher where we can switch users as well as start a new session, lock session or leave. And then to the left of that, we have a search button. I'm not too sure how necessary that is, considering KDE has the KRunner built in that you can just summon with an alt space. Or, of course, you can just start typing on your desktop and launch your applications like so. We then have the drop down for our status and notifications. And then we have a whole lot going in here in sort of our system tray area. So we have networks, display configuration, removable devices, volume, virtual keyboard, a clipboard, 
Oh, cool. So it has the drop down terminal. I'm not a huge user of these, but it's pretty cool for those that like it. And it appears that we have got the ZSH shell as our default shell. And the drop down can be summoned using the F12 shortcut key. We then have a quick link to our Stacer, which is our system cleaner, Garuda settings manager. What have we got here? Here's all of our firewall settings. We then have a weather widget. Okay, and then we have a little icon here for Kate, which is your default text editor when using KDE. And then again, we can get to the more traditional KDE notifications by clicking that bell. And as we're using KDE 5.20, we should just be able to click it with our middle click. And as you can see, notifications are now on. And then we could click that again to turn them back off. We then have a little widget for our network usage. So up and down, whenever sort of traffic happens, you'll get a little dialogue there telling you exactly what's going on. Now moving towards the central part of our screen, this is where we're going to find a clock as opposed to the right side. I quite like a central clock as long as it is dead center and that appears pretty central from first impressions and just clicking that clock, it is interactable. We'll get a drop down with a calendar here and sort of a list view as well as a little time there. And if we had actually configured the weather, we'd also get an output of the weather. Now you might notice whenever we click something that overlaps the panel, it's gone as a completely solid color as opposed to the transparency. So it's got a nice little dynamic transparency effect, which I'm actually a big fan of. It lets you really sort of focus on what you're doing and doesn't pull you away with the flashy animations. So to quickly show you how that works, if we was to open up our default file manager, which is Dolphin, whenever you go to it, it's going to very quickly, there's not too much of a lag there for the animation, go into a solid color and the same will happen of course when you full screen an application and then your latte dock is set to auto hide or dodge windows. Now we can also see we have one of my favorite things out of the box which is a global menu so we can access all of the application settings right from within our top panel. Now moving towards here we have a workspace switcher which is in the up and down motion. I much prefer it on a single grid just going left to right but that's easily fixed. Now we have our application launcher and by the looks of it, it's the simple menu. And we also have a few more options here. So we've got configure simple menu layouts. Okay, interesting. So we also have a layout switcher, which we'll test out in just a moment as well. Okay, cool. So applications wise, before we do that, let's jump into the about section and just confirm which versions of things we are using. Okay, that's opened up the discover store. That's not what I wanted. Let's do that again. There we go, system information. So as you can see, because we are using an Arch-based distro, we will have a nice and up-to-date version of the KDE desktop, which is version 5.20. And you can see our kernel there is 5.9.1 Zen. So we are using the Zen kernel, which is supposed to give you sort of faster response times and all of that good stuff. Right, now let's get into the application. So we're using an Ultimate Edition, so there's gonna be a whole plethora of different applications included out of the box. We won't look at everything because we'll be here all day, but we'll take a look at certain things that might catch our eye. So we have Cuttlefish, we have the GUI for SRCPY, which, let me just get my USB cable, is a pretty cool little application that I use a lot, which will let you sort of mirror your Android phone screen on your actual desktop here. So now that I've plugged in my phone, let's have a look and see if that's working out of the box. So we should just be able to click this and then see our phone screen straight away. Okay, let's start SRCPY. And is it gonna work? Maybe? Okay, I've just pressed allow on the phone. Let's see if it'll pop up now. Okay, it's still not starting. Let's do that again. There we go. Oh, and as you can see, there's the timer that we use to time this distro installation time. That way you can know I'm not just making it up and pulling numbers out of thin air there. Okay, cool, let's close out. I'm quite happy to see that out of the box. Let's just close all these little sort of windows and keep moving. So is there anything else in development that I particularly want to take a look at? We have Compare, Localize, QT Assistant Designer, Linguist and Dbus Viewer. And no, so let's move on to Education. So we have LibreOffice Math, which is of course an application included in a LibreOffice suite of applications. And I think this uses the fresh LibreOffice sort of suite, which means we should have the most up-to-date version. But we'll check that out in just a moment as well. Okay, so in games, we've got quite a lot here. We have Solitaire, DOSBox, GameHub, GeoVillay, Itch, Kmajong, Knights, Lutris, which is a very handy tool to install sort of non Linuxy games, Mario, MindTest, Mini Galaxy, PCSX2, which I think is an emulator, RetroArch, which is pretty cool, and then we have the Steam as well as T Worlds. 
Okay, in graphics we have Conversine, G Overlay, Gwenview, Color Paint Critter, Liberal Office Draw, Ocular Scan, Light and XDVI. For a Ultimate Edition, I thought we would have seen GIMP installed out of the box there, but nevertheless, let's keep moving. Okay, we've got quite a lot going on here on the internet. So we have the SSH and VNC server browsers. Discord installed out of the box, which if you want to join the Tyler's Tech Discord server, there's always a link in the description below these videos. We then have Firefox as our default web browser. Let's just open that up very quickly. And it appears that we've got quite a few extensions there, and I do believe we've also got Bitwarden, and it's opened up a whole lot of different browser tabs. Okay, let's keep moving. So is there anything else in the internet we want to check out? Of course we have KDE Connect which lets you sort of wirelessly share notifications etc from your Android phone. KRDC which is the Linux equivalent to sort of remote desktop protocol that you get on Microsoft which is quite a handy tool actually. I've used it quite a bit because I actually think it's better than a lot of the other sort of rem remote desktop viewers and it works quite well especially on I have an iPad Pro and doing that on Linux actually gives me full sort of touch support and everything works very nicely. We then have KRFB, Modem Manager, Mumble. God, I haven't seen Mumble in God knows how long. Nitro Share, which is a very cool little application that I actually use quite a lot on my own personal machines. So any computer on the same local area network as you, you'll be able to share applications between, uh, sort of files and folders between them as long as they're both running a nitro share and it's a very nice little GUI so it will sit in your sort of top bar here and you can just right click send files or directories choose what you want to send choose the computer and you're good to go so very nice and easy so what else have we got we have qubit torrent for our torrents let me just unplug my phone because that's going to keep popping up <laughs> okay we then have again steam remote viewer sync thing gtk Telegram desktop and Thunderbird is you're going to be your default desktop email client. So no complaints there when you're using KDE and the Extreme Download Manager. Now in Lost and Found, we have HP UI Scan and Q YouTube DL. Well, so there's really a lot going on here in multimedia, so much so that it can't fit it all on the first page. So we have Echo Mixer, Elisa, which is a very good um, sort of music player. I use it a lot on my own personal machines, especially for KDE, very capable little music player. Let's keep going. So then we have NV24 Control, Jack Restack, Mixers, K3B, Camoso, Caden Live out of the box. Perfect. Makes my life a bit easier when we've got to edit this video. Kid Free, K Wave Sound, Media Elk. I have no idea what this is. Let's uh, let's take a look at what Media Elk is. Okay, so what's this then? It appears to be like a little movie manager where we can edit sort of settings here, add fan art, shows, concerts. We can also import. Let's go into the settings here and see what's actually going on. Okay, so it's got network support as well. This could be quite an interesting little application. Might be worth spending a bit of time taking a look at everything that this can do. Okay, cool. Well, let's keep moving. So we're still in multimedia. So we have MPV, OBS Studio, Olivia. I've not used Olivia before either. Let's have a little look at what this is. Okay, so it appears to be another little music player. It looks like there's quite... A lot we can do here and I'm just seeing little sort of tabs here for YouTube as well so it appears to have some sort of online support where you can use it with YouTube and stuff okay that's pretty cool it's a little GUI there for downloading and watching YouTube on the Linux desktop so I guess you can do that all from within this application interesting okay so it makes sense well I've never heard of it it's currently in beta but that could be quite a cool application as well okay so I think that's pretty much everything else in multimedia. Of course, we have some subtitle composers, Streamlink, Twitch. And then last but not least, VLC Media Player, which is my favorite media player, so no complaints there. Okay, Office. And we have Joplin, Kyle, the full liberal Office suite, localized, ocular, and PDF mix tool. So we did want to see if we are using the fresh or the still package. And judging by the splash screen there, this is the fresh package, which should mean we should be on version 7.0.2.2. Two. Oh, it's even gone up now so we're now on version 7.0.3.1 so you get a nice most up-to-date version of LibreOffice out of the box hasn't got language support installed out of the box though so you might want to go into the LibreOffice website and download a dictionary to get language support and all of that good stuff okay let's move on so I think that's everything in office now in settings we of course just have our sort of KDE system settings etc as well as Garuda and Kavantum out of the box 
which is what it's going to be using along with the themes to get you some nice blur on a lot of the windows uh, application windows okay so there's a lot going on here in system we have alice i never know how to say that alice tree alacrity whatever Conkey, which is our little desktop widget right about there we then have our firewall settings discover store so as well as the pamac because we're on kde we've got the discover store as well which i'm going to imagine will also have the plugins for Flatpak and possibly snaps k sysguard kde manager k wallet htop is installed out of the box very nice and on the next page we have time shift which is what we've just checked out how we can do btrfs snapshots cool so it's got vert manager installed out of the box which is my preferred way to manage vms as opposed to something like VirtualBox, and we have Sue Studio Image Writer, Q4 Wine, Samba Servers, and a lot of other stuff by the looks of it. So again, this Ultimate Edition might not be for everyone who doesn't like to have a load of bloat installed out of the box. Now on utilities, we have Anti Micro X. Oh, cool! We even have the App Image Launcher. So as well as having Flatpak and snaps installed out of the box it also has the app image launcher which basically means it's got the whole gamut covered as a you know as far as sort of distro agnostic package managers so you've got app images flat packs and snaps very cool if you like that whole thing i'm kind of more of an app image guy and i tend to only use a couple depending on what desktop i am on much prefer to sort of rely on native packages we then have arc for our archiving conkey manager emoji selector next cloud desktop client Game Elf, Cavantum, cool. Next page we have Wine Tricks, Piper, Spectacle, which is obviously what you're going to be using for screenshots and all of that good stuff. And then last but not least, we have Wine installed out of the box and it's actually already configured it along with the notepad that you'll find from Windows. Let's go ahead and open up the notepad. There you go. So you've got your old school sort of Windows little notepad there as well and it should all just work as you'd expect and we can save it and all of that good stuff. And I've just noticed we also have the wobbly Windows effect enabled out of the box. Okay. So I think that's pretty much everything in so far as applications. So what we're going to do is do a reboot, see how much RAM this uses at a fresh boot and then we'll take a look at this layout switcher that I'm quite intrigued about, test out Hibernate and just have a little play around. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I'm back, and this is definitely not the sort of distribution that if you're concerned about RAM usage should be the choice that you choose. So as you can see there, RAM usage is incredibly high on a fresh boot at 1.7 GB. But like I said, the light additions are always there if that's something that you are concerned about. And you can see our rather large swap partition there, which we're going to use to test out hibernation in just a moment. Right, so what I want to do is jump into the global theming package now and see what themes we have installed out of the box. So let's go into global themes. Okay, so quite a few actually. So of course we have the default breeze themes for light and dark, KDE themes. We then have classic, familiar, which is like a Windows 10-y kind of theme there. Modern, oxygen, unity, which I guess you're going to implement when you're using the unity layout. And then the sort of Big Sur, Apple Mac OS kind of inspired themes there. So for icons, we have the Taylor circle with the default that we're currently on, but it also has the sort of whole variation of the Taylor icon themes there. It appears to have pretty much every Taylor sort of icon theme you can think about. And it appears that's the only sort of icon pack that it really has. Of course, you have the standard Aduata and Breeze icons as well. Okay, let's test out some of these layout switching. So what we're going to do is go into layouts here and let's go to manage layouts and have a look at how this all works. So here we are in the settings now, and it's going to be using Latte Doc to implement the sort of different layouts, as that's what we've got on the bottom. And also we have a Latte panel, basically, instead of a standard KDE panel, which we double check by doing that. And as you can see, you can change all of the settings in the Latte settings there. Right, so we've got multiple layouts here. And if we go into single layout, I guess we can change it from here, and we could also change it from there. So let's try Unity then while we're in here. So I guess we just press Switch. And that should now sort of reshuffle our desktop around. Oh, I was expecting more than that. That needs to extend the whole sort of length of the screen. You can edit that set yourself in the uh, Latte Doc settings. But it would have been nicer if they'd done that for you out of the box. But I guess it might grow as you add new applications to it. So I don't know where our launcher is now gone. So it doesn't appear that we actually have a launcher when we're in this view. Ah, oh, of course we do. So it changes to the standard KDE launcher. So let's open up a program that isn't currently pinned and see if um, our dock on the left will grow with the applications. So we've just tried to open up Caden Live. 
and there you go so it is going to grow but i guess you could also extend that your full length if you preferred it like that personally i would probably extend it to the whole length of the screen to get more of a traditional layout of a unity now let's see if these windows but um, action buttons will go into the top menu they don't so oh hot corners not my favorite so i think they've missed a trick there i think that unity layout could have been done a whole lot better so now let's go back straight into the standard garuda settings and leave it on the default there okay it doesn't appear to want to be switching this time interesting let's try and do it with the right click on the actual launcher here so let's go to layouts and select garuda hmm okay that should be implemented a little bit better than that but let's try it again go away hot corners okay let's try it again so let's go back into layouts and go to manage layouts and see if we can indeed get it back onto the garuda no let's try single layout okay layout unity is broken please remove it to improve stability oh dear not good okay so we can just go back to our standard garuda setting for now it's a little bit of a shame that the Unity layout isn't set up perfectly out of the box because I'm a big fan of that layout and I would have given this distro bonus points if that was all working as it should. But again, this is quite a new distro in terms of its lifespan. So all of the rough edges that are currently here will hopefully be ironed out to make this quite a full featured desktop distribution. Okay, let's close this off. And let's also close the sidebar there for Latte Dock. Right, so before we test out the hibernation, we're going to jump into the system settings for KDE for one final time and see what KWIN scripts we are using out of the box because I think there is going to be some because this doesn't appear to be doing a lot of the default sort of behavior you would expect for KWIN. So here we have the KWIN scripts. So we have force blur, we have force decorations for GTK3, minimize all, synchronize skip switcher, and the video wall. Okay. Right, so what we're now going to do is see if we can test out this hibernation and make sure it all works with suspend to disk. Let's just open up a few things. So let's open up our files manager. Oh, I forgot to mention as well, as well as the um, sort of simple menu at the top here, you'll also notice down at the bottom, we have a little ego I, um, eagle icon here, which is then going to give you another dashboard. And this time it's the full screen dashboard. Interesting. So they should have had that, I reckon, on the Unity sort of layout, but... Like it told us, that is currently broken, so we won't go into that too much. Right, let's start opening a few windows and then test this out with the hibernation. Okay, Firefox is open. Let's also open up our text editor, which of course is K and KCalc. Okay, so what we're going to do now is summon a hibernate and we're going to do it straight from the terminal to give it the best possible chance. So what we're going to do is type in sudo systemctl hibernate. So I'm going to hit enter, type in our password, and hopefully when we return, everything that was on the screen now will be back after we've started up and resumed from hibernation. So I'm going to pause the video and be back in just a moment. Okay, so we're just powering back on. We're at our boot screen, so let's hit enter and cross our fingers that hibernation has indeed worked. Okay, so we've been greeted with our lock screen, which is a good sign. So let's just wiggle our mouse and get our password up. And I've got a good feeling as that we've actually seen the lock screen, so that should indeed work. Perfect. So hibernation has worked absolutely fine. So I think we're going to wrap it up there. But all in all, despite the few rough edges that are currently present here that you would expect from quite a new distribution, I do think this is quite a decent distro that's got some, it's got a bit of a future. I think once they iron out the sort of rough edges that we have seen present in here so far, it could be quite a capable desktop distribution i can see what they're doing with these ultimate editions i'd personally much prefer to go for the light edition but for the sake of these videos i thought it best to check out the ultimate edition and see everything that they've set up for you out of the box thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and also join the discord there's a link in the description i'll see you on the next one Bye bye